Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Steve Saviak from Vallejo Pharma. How are you today, Steve? Tracy, it's nice to be back on your show. Okay, headline the other day from one of our top writers. Vallejo Pharma launches Modesca and is forecasting company revenues to increase 20 times by 2025. You can't do any better than starting with a question on how the heck you're going to do that, and congratulations on your deal. Yes, well, thank you. Uh, it's you know That revenue growth, while it may seem um, very uh, obviously large and very uh, challenging, is, is really going to flow off the back of three products, the first being Redesca, and uh, secondly, uh, Enerzair and Tectura, which are our two new asthma products. Those three will drive probably about 70% of that revenue growth. Uh, as for Redesca, what we've announced recently, number one, is we've started to ship the product. So the product is being used now in the marketplace. Number two, we announced uh, last week that the government of Ontario has uh, agreed to reimburse the drug. That means uh, they've agreed to pay for the drug. And uh, as of the end of last week, we've been actually successful with engaging with a number of hospitals in Ontario and outside of Ontario, which are now going to start uh, stocking the drug and, and using it on their patients. So um, those three elements of, uh, of, sh- of having product in the field, having the government starting to pay for it, and having uh, the hospital starting to use the product are, are key for us with Redesca. Okay. And again, lots of news coming out. Everyone out there who does not know who Valea Pharma, Pharma is, is probably going, hey, whoa, back us up here, please, Steve. Redesca, what is it? Well, Redesca is a, uh, is a you, know, in, you know, basically in basic terms, a blood thinner uh, or an anticoagulant, as it's a bit more technically known as. So what it's, it's used for either pre or post-surgery is to prevent blood clots that can arise uh, from bedridden patients. And these blood clots, unfortunately, what happens is that they're, they, they form in the extremities and they can find their way into your lung. And once they find their way into your lung, uh, this is not a very good situation. It can be fatal. So it's a, it's a treatment that's been around for a long time. Uh, low molecular weight heparins, which is the class of drug that we're uh, talking about, have been commercial since the early 90s. So we're looking at you know, 25 years. Great safety profile. It's really a standard of care in the hospital. If you've been hospitalized, you've had a knee implant, you've had cardiac surgery, you've had a number of different procedures, you've probably been receiving or had you've received it and you never knew you were getting it during the day. Uh, so it's a daily treatment for roughly about 14 days post-surgery. Uh, can be, as I said earlier, administered prior to surgery. Um, and again, good safety profile. And it's a lifesaver. It, it reduces the clots that can be life-threatening. So just for greater impact, um, I just want to remind everybody that you made a deal with the Ontario Public Drug Benefit Program, correct, for Redesca? That's correct. And when does that go into effect? It's, it's in effect as we speak. It actually went into effect October, uh, sorry, April 30th, uh, which is relatively quick uh, given the timelines that typ- it typically takes for a drug to get reimbursed in Canada. So Ontario was the first province. We expect the other provinces in Canada to follow suit. But Ontario, as we know, has about 40% of Canada's population and represents about 40% of the sales of these anticoagulants. So it's very important uh, market for us to, uh, to have this coverage. As you know, uh, drugs are you know, very important and bring a lot of benefits to people, but there is the aspect of who's going to pay for a drug. And uh, the, pri- the, the public payers, such as the province of Ontario, the province of Quebec, and, and so forth, uh, are key uh, payers or contributors in paying for drugs. About 50% of all drugs in Canada are supported directly by the provinces, the cost of these drugs. So getting Ontario to agree to be uh, uh, to reimburse this drug, which means to pay for this drug for certain patients that qualify, uh, is, a, is, a, is a big step and, and uh, cannot be underestimated. So let me just comprehend this properly. You have you announced a commercial launch for Desca. April 15th. You had a deal almost two weeks later with the uh, Ontario uh, health program, and we should be seeing revenues, the impact in your next quarterly results. Is that correct? There is some Redesca revenues in our quarter two, which ended uh, on Friday. So there, there was some, uh, some early uh, impact. Uh, I would imagine that it'll be more pronounced in the third quarter, which started uh, on Monday. So uh, yes, we're shipping. We have product. 
Uh, it's a vibrant market, uh, it, and we think that we have some competitive advantages in that marketplace. And uh, I would say your viewers will 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 sort of talk more about Redesca revenues as it goes on, but uh, they could see this uptick and should see this uptick in Redesca sales uh, really on a month by month basis. Okay, well, thank you so much for all the good news and giving us an update on Redesca, but you just alluded to a competitive advantage. Can you tell us what a competitive advantage on Redesca is for the market? Well, the, the uh, you know, the without getting into, I guess, too much technicality, the drug is considered to be a biosimilar. So that means it's biologically similar to three existing drugs that are in that marketplace today. And that market is about a $200 million market in Canada. Uh, the governments uh, are want to encourage biosimilars. Why? Because it expands supply, but it also reduces uh, their costs. So our, one of the advantages of our drug is basically lower cost equivalent to the conventional drugs in the market. But the second advantage is the availability, that strong supply chain, which uh, many drugs, that's not really an issue. And for this class of drugs, it is an issue. You can have shortages. And as you can imagine, shortages of a of a drug that can be a potentially a lifesaver is 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 not to be is is not something the governments want to to have. So they're encouraging the use of biosimilars, and they're encouraging us, and Ontario obviously very much so by being the first to adopt um, the, adopt this drug. So it's a uh, it's a very uh, for us it's a company changer, we're taking us from you know a seven eight million dollar company revenue wise to now. Over the, I mean, when I talk about 30 million, it's not this year, but it, it's generally within 24 to 30 months. Our expectation is that's when we should hit that peak. Um, so it's a, you know, con a constant increase month over month. Well, Steve, thank you so much for joining us again. For all of you out there watching Vallejo Pharma, make sure you sign up for their regular news release updates. And congratulations, Steve. Thank you very much, Tracy.